Hey folks, it's Mike with Chasing Trail. I haven't posted any videos in a bit, and this is why. New bike day. Uh, as some might guess, if you've watched any of my videos on the 450L, I really tried to love that bike, but I just couldn't. It was more than I needed off-road, and I didn't enjoy it on the street. So I sold that, and was lucky to get my hands on this 2021 CRF 300L Rally ABS. There it is. It'll only be this clean once. I uh, just brought it home yesterday. Gonna go for a ride today. It's nice and sunny. It is cold. It's about 49 degrees, but I've got my full aero stitch banana suit on. And uh, yeah, I'm about to hop on, go for a ride. Completely bone stock. So I've got lots of stuff on order for it already. Many farkles. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna run down to the gas station, get some gas, and then I'll fire the camera back up and give you my initial impressions. I don't need gas after all, so here we go on our maiden voyage, 0 0.2 miles. Be back in a bit. I can definitely smell some things burning off. I probably should have adjusted my mirrors beforehand. Let's do that. That mirror is a little wonky. First reaction, power is fine. It's not. Uh, it's definitely not my BMW R 1250. It does feel better than the WR 250R I owned very briefly. I love the dash. The brake is doing very little. So I need to be cautious with that. Uh, vibrations are minimal. It is very smooth. Feels incredibly light. And yeah, that front brake is useless at the moment. Not a big surprise. Windshield's pretty much blocking all of the wind. I feel very little. Uh, it is creating some very noisy wind though. So there is that. If I get down here, out of it up here yeah I don't feel any wind pressure but it's definitely noisy air I did not wear my earplugs today because I kind of wanted to hear everything the motor and just get a sense of this and it's definitely noisy uh, for reference I am six foot one 220 pounds although probably 235 with the, my current gear or more and I have a 32 inch inseam. Cruising at 60 miles an hour feels very comfortable. Bike doesn't feel stressed at all. My hope for this bike is that I'd be able to cruise at 65 miles an hour comfortably. That's uh, something that on the 450L I really felt like I was ringing it out at 65. I'm sure I could do it for long stretches of time, but it wasn't enjoyable. This is much more pleasant to ride on the street. I can already say I'm very pleased with this uh, road manners. Especially on this really cold day, I'm thankful that it's blocking most of the wind. I feel a little bit on my shoulders. 
I was really kind of nervous about how it would be with this windshield. Cruising right at 65 indicated, which is probably slightly less. Rear shock is definitely soft. I knew that going into it. I've already got another uh, YSS on order. And on a road like this, it's not awful, but I kind of, it's kind of that tuna boat Cadillac sensation. Reminds me of, uh, I had a 2001 Buick Regal LS and that car rode like a tuna boat and this, this, <laughs> this reminds me of that car. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't feel, I still have the stock, the rubber mounted foot pegs and stuff in. I barely feel any vibration. Very little. Which is, uh, I always like to feel something on a motorcycle. That's why I worry about electric bikes. Um, it's not having that noise factor, but definitely not an annoying vibration. So far, I mean, the power definitely feels better than what I remember on the WR250R I had. I love that w everything about that WR250R except the motor. It just did not have enough power for me. And the one I owned for all of a week had all the upgrades on it. It was FMF, uh, full system exhaust with a programmer. Airbox mods, smog delete, all that stuff was done. And it still felt like I was riding a scooter. It was fine off-road, but it just wasn't enough for me on the road. And it is chilly today. I was hoping these uh, wind deflectors would work a little better than they are. My hands are freezing. I'm debating whether or not to get heated grips for this thing. Right at this moment, I would definitely appreciate having a pair. I am going to be doing some performance mods to this. I have a Moto X full system on order already. And I have prepaid for the 550 performance ECU flash. I also have a DNA air filter on order, which will, it's a reusable filter and it should, uh, says it provides about 10% more airflow, which is the only airbox mod I plan to do. So once I have the exhaust and the air filter, and who knows when that will be these days with all the supply chain stuff. Then I will remove the ECU and send that in, but in the meantime, I want to be able to ride the bike and I don't want to have that ECU flash without those mods. I'm not sure how it might run. And I want to get just a feeling for the stock power so I can appreciate what those mods hopefully do. I'm reading on uh, the forums namely Adventure Rider. People said it definitely seemed to, to help. It's a great thread going on Adventure Rider for the 300L and Rally owners. Really helpful. A lot of good people in there. Some more first impressions. The bike feels really, really light. Um, I mean, it, most bikes don't feel heavy on the road. I'm gonna go this way. It's a little bit more interesting route. The slipper clutch does its job. It's definitely not a rocket ship, but I didn't expect it to be. Acceleration feels fine. I was worried the rally might feel kind of heavy once I get off road, but and granted, I haven't gone off-road yet, but just from riding around on here, it feels so light, I don't think it's going to be an issue for me off-road. Not with the, the kind of trails that I plan to take it on and, and do. Which, again, is another reason that <coughs> the 450L just wasn't the right bike for me. 
the, the terrain where that bike shines is not the kind of stuff I like to ride on anyway, so. They go easy on the turns until these tires are scrubbed in. Bike does feel a little wallowy. Again, not surprised given the uh, stock suspension. His brakes aren't doing anything. Oh, they barely work. That's a little disconcerting. Hopefully that improves with time. As I suspect they will. Let's see if we can do a no foot down stop. Yep, good enough. Yeah, bike does not feel great in the corners because it's because how much it's wallowing about. I think the suspension's going to be a big improvement there. Clutch is super light. So far it feels great on this gravel road. Suspension actually feels better here than it did on the street. I can hardly feel any of these bumps. Well, there it's sort of pogoing a bit. So far it feels really good. No issue whatsoever on this gravel road. Hello cows. Cows like this nice quiet stock exhaust as I'm sure the people at the bottom of the hill will too. Well, initial pressure so far, I'm really happy with it. I think it's exactly what I expected and wanted. Obviously the suspension needs to be sorted, but I knew that coming into it. At my weight, uh, any bike's going to need some suspension stuff and a minimum stiffer springs. <clears throat> so I just always expect that. On the 450L, the only thing I needed to... Oh, squirrel! Thank goodness I didn't get him. Uh, watch out, buddy. Watch out, little guy. Oh! Uh, 450L, I just needed a stiffer rear spring. That was it. So it was very well sorted. The problem I had with the 450L is I couldn't get it in a happy medium for street and dirt. If I got it where I wanted on the street, it wasn't as good on the dirt and vice versa. So, again, that bike is really a street legal dirt bike. It's not a dual sport like this bike is. I guess the rally might even be light adventure, whatever. I think what a lot of people, like myself, would have wanted is a bike like this with a 450 motor, but the tamer characteristics, the long maintenance intervals, etc. I think people, I've seen a lot of these pretty new 450s for sale with very low miles. The one I had is now on its fourth owner already with less than 2,000 miles, so I think, like me, people buy them thinking it's going to be you know a dual sport like this like a WR or a DRZ or 250 whatever these smaller displacement dual sports and then realize they're on a race bike with really intense maintenance and that just is much fun to ride on the road and realize it's not the right bike for them a 450L is for people who like KTM's and might want, you know, Honda reliability. Although if I were gonna do it again, and buy a bike like that again, I would go the KTM Husqvarna route. They're lighter. I don't think the maintenance is any more intensive. Um, you know, I'd have to ride them back to back, I guess. I've never ridden the KTM or Husqvarna, but just having the lighter weight, and I don't think there's gonna be any significant difference in the uh, reliability for a road like this which is exactly typical of the kind of roads I want to be taking this bike on while I'm really pogoing around yeah the suspension the shock is awful the front doesn't seem too bad honestly not yet anyway but this rear is as bad as everyone says that's got to got to go immediately For these kind of roads, this bike is seems perfect. The seat is pretty firm. 
Uh, I've heard they might break in a bit. I've already got a seat concept seat on order. Uh, I've just found a seat, something I don't mess around with. I want the best seat possible. They got a, I got the Comfort XL, it's 12 inches wide for my wide ass. Look forward to that. Looks like they're about three months out, current ETA. Yeah, overall, I'm really pleased. This is, uh, it doesn't exceed any of my expectations, but it certainly doesn't disappoint anywhere either. It's, it's right what I expected and I'm really happy with it. I think this will be exactly what I was looking for and wanted. We'll see once I get a proper off-road test and can take it out to the dam and ride around up there on some actual trails, but thus far for first ride and you know I've only got 21 miles but I'm really enjoying it. Brakes are starting to feel better. I came real close to buying a DRZ 400 which would have been my second one. Instead of this I found a good deal on one not too far away. Almost brand new, it was 2020. Really nice guy that was selling it. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it had Oregon plates on it and not 7,500 miles. It did not have the uh, California sticker, so wasn't going to work out for me. And in hindsight, I don't regret it. I mean, the DRZ definitely has noticeably more torque but it also vibrates a lot, at least relative to this, and feels like it's screaming at 65. This is just, other than the torque, which granted, and the suspension, stock suspension on DRZ is definitely better. Everyone knows that. Uh, but if you're planning to do suspension anyway, who cares? The torque is awesome on the DRZ. Everything else about this is better. If torque and power are the only thing you care about, D or Z. If transmission, wind protection, range, ergonomics, comfort, if all those other factors have value to you, this. That's my initial conclusion. I did so much research on this bike. Sometimes I feel like when you do all that research and then you ride it, it all goes out the window. In this case, actually surprising to me even, the bike is right what I expected. And that's good because all the things I had determined that were important to me are hitting the mark. Yes, nothing is blowing me away, being like, wow, that's better than I expected, and nothing is disappointing me. Boing, boing, boing. like Tigger hopping around on my tail. Pulling my fat ass right up the hill, still accelerating. I'm happy with that. Really pleased with this bike so far. I'm not going to do some kind of formal review, you know, I'm just a dude riding a bike and sharing some of my thoughts. And overall, it's exactly what I had wanted it to be. Very pleased with it. Look forward to doing so all my farkles and, and setting it up just the way I want. Customizing it for me. And I think it's going to be a great little bike. No buyer's remorse whatsoever. It's tough. Where I live, you, you can't test ride Japanese bikes before you buy them. And I didn't know these things are so hard to come by. I didn't know anyone. I haven't even seen one in the wild around here, let alone know anybody that would uh, let me ride their bike. So, it's always a gamble. It's a lot of money to spend and hope you like it, but 
in this case, it worked out. Sixth gear up a hill, no problem. Brakes are definitely getting better. Yeah, the, the more I ride, the more I'm liking it. Uh, that's the best praise I think I could give a bike. I really, I just want to keep riding. I don't want to go home right now, but I want my wife to have a chance to go out and do something today. I was gone all day yesterday picking this bike up. I traveled a little ways out of town, about an hour and 45 minutes, down to Gridley Honda. I can't say enough good things about them. That was the best uh, buying experience I've ever had. Drew there was super easy to work with, really good dude. Everyone is chill and down to earth. They got two dogs that just hang out in the shop. One named Finn, he's the chonkiest French Bulldog I've ever seen, an awesome little dog. Just a, a great place to buy from. I always try to keep my business local if I can. And I think I actually would have got a little bit better deal, but they haven't seen any of these bikes and don't know when they'll get them. When I talked to my local dealer about it, he said, if you can find one, go buy it. You know, no, no issue servicing or warranty stuff. Like, we're, we get it. So, when the opportunity arose, I jumped on it. I know this varies a lot by where you live and tax rate and everything. My tax rate is 7.25%. My out the door price was $8,036. That was a $500 markup. My understanding is in other places they're getting a lot higher markup than that. So, wasn't stoked to pay that, tried to talk them down, but they said we've had so much interest in this bike already, we're not, we're not going to budge on it, I don't, you know, I don't blame them. Some of it is, especially up here, these dealers don't get a ton of inventory, like some of the bigger shops, and when they are only getting a handful of bikes to sell, they've got to make up that money somewhere, so I, I sympathize with them a little bit. I still think it was a fair price given uh, supply chain issues and such and how hard these are to come by. I had an opportunity to purchase the standard model CR300L ABS and I could have got a better deal on that. It would have been 7000 out the door. They're only doing 250 markup on that but I just decided I really wanted the rally. After seeing the L in person, I definitely wanted the rally. And after riding it today, I absolutely made the right choice. And the L would be a great option too. On the rally, I just, a few of the things I really like. Uh, I really like the bigger tank. I'm sure there'll be aftermarket options for the L before too long. I like that it was stock. I like the large, the wider seat with uh, rubber dampening. I was nervous about the windscreen because I've had some in the past that just had really bad buffeting and I've come to really like naked bikes because I just like smooth clean air but for my height uh, this thing is working out perfect I'm, I'm really happy with it blocks just enough air little noisy coming off the top but no it's not knocking my helmet around or doing anything weird so, really pleased with that. Yeah. Overall, I'm just pleased. And a word. See, so yeah, I feel like I'm probably repeating myself in case I edit those portions out. In conclusion, sort of my summary of this first ride here at 56 miles. Uh, really pleased, very happy with the bike. Doesn't exceed my expectations anywhere, it also doesn't disappoint. And so, it was absolutely the right bike for what I wanted. And I'm really enjoying riding it, and I can't wait to do some more rides with 
we get some good weather again and, and take this thing off road and see how it does. I've got a ton of farkles on order. I'm sure I'll do some build videos. I'm not going to go in depth on how to install everything. There's already some really good videos out there for that. In particular, a guy named Peak Motorcycles, uh, an English gentleman, has a really good video series on doing a lot of the upgrades and step by step kind of gotchas to watch out for. So, um, yeah, awesome bike. Really happy with it. Very happy with my decision to purchase it. I can't wait to ride it more.